My name is Judy Regensteiner. I'm professor of medicine at the University of Colorado School of Medicine in Denver, Colorado. I am uh, also the director of the Center for Women's Health Research and the Judith and Joseph Wagner Chair of Women's Health Research. Um, I just presented at the International Academy of Cardiology annual scientific sessions for 2017 held in Vancouver. My presentation was about diabetes and the cardiovascular effects of diabetes on exercise performance and what the mechanisms are by which the exercise is impaired in type 2 diabetes. Um, my work is based on the knowledge that exercise capacity is diminished in type 2 diabetes whether we look at maximal or submaximal levels of exercise. And this is true even if there are no complications of diabetes in uh, people who are relatively young, even with type 2 diabetes, um, around the age of 40 to 50. All the women in the studies are premenopausal, and the men are the same age group. And what we found is that exercise capacity is very abnormal, again, both maximal and submaximal. And we've been looking at why this is. Um, my colleague and I, my colleague being Dr. Jane Roosh, who's an endocrinologist at my institution, have been looking at this question for many years. And why does it matter? It matters because uh, the ability to exercise is actually linked to mortality. So if you can exercise better, you're more going to live more long. You're going to live longer, and of course that's that's pretty important. With type 2 diabetes, uh, exercise being abnormal is particularly injurious because. Uh, exercise is one of the keystones of treatment for type 2 diabetes. So without the ability to carry out good exercise and have adequate physical activity, people with type 2 diabetes are more likely to develop complications such as heart disease, which are going to cause them major morbidity and mortality. We looked at the role of the heart in causing these abnormalities, and what we found was that, uh, again, even in hearts that look completely normal, and we screened people very carefully, that people with type 2 diabetes showed a real difference when they exercised with regard to cardiac function, such as their uh, cardiac pulmonary wedge pressure rose more in type 2 diabetes than in controls. And this is a measure of stiffness of the heart, so it looks like people with type 2 diabetes may have a stiffer heart, and we keep looking into that. In fact, the stiffness of the heart or the cardiac, the, pump, the wedge pressure abnormalities were linked to uh, inadequate perfusion of the heart. We showed not inadequate exactly, but reduced perfusion. We showed that cardiac perfusion was more uh, reduced in type 2 diabetes than in controls in some of our studies. When we, and we looked at the wedge pressure when we cathed the right heart and looked at the performance there. So we've seen some very abnormal, abnormal findings in the heart, and yet they don't seem to account for all the abnormality in exercise performance. So now we're looking at the role of the mitochondrial biogenesis and function, mitochondrial biogenesis and function in type 2 diabetes, and finding some abnormalities there and looking at ways to correct these. In addition, we're looking to inadequate blood flow perfusion in type 2 diabetes and seeing if we can improve perfusion and mitochondrial function if we can improve the exercise abnormalities found in type 2 diabetes. We're very excited to look at these things because uh, type 2 diabetes is truly becoming an epidemic, you know, not technically, but in terms of numbers, it's increasing in prevalence enormously and we would like to reduce the morbidity and mortality associated with type 2 diabetes.